finish his PhD confirmation review. So he's one year into PhD working on knowledge graph for like asset management. So at the moment we use tunnel as an example. And then Saeed started from early this year. Uh, so still the first year in, into PhD. Uh, and then Saeed is looking into sort of like a gra you know, graphics uh, information modeling system for construction monitoring. Thanks to the introduction of question. And uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Jack, and uh, I'm the second year PhD student in, from the School of Civil and uh, Environmental Engineering. Uh, today, it's my honor to share some of my thoughts and present my work, some of my work in this domain. And uh, my title today is the Information Extraction for Constructing the Domain Knowledge Graph. Uh, as we know that uh, digitalization is the development direction uh, in the infrastructure operation and maintenance, which is called OM in short. And uh, the knowledge graph is a representative uh, technology. And in the digital twin, uh, uh, that uh, information from the physical world are transmitted to the virtual world, including the information in the OM handbooks or the information of the infrastructure itself. After the fusion of the data, after the uh, interaction of the data, uh, the decision-making progress is conducted, and then the infrastructure is maintained. And in this framework, the data interaction and the fusion is the most important section. Uh, Nowadays, more and more researchers propose to take use of the knowledge graph to present and to represent the data in the digital twin because the knowledge graph has uh, advantages, uh, including its ability in representing the cross model thematic, thematic information and also its, its ability, its reasoning ability due to its graph structure. And uh, the data in the digital twin can mainly be divided into two types. The first one is called the regular knowledge. The second type is the factual knowledge. And all this sort of knowledge is tra uh, transformed into the knowledge graph. And the main source of the regular knowledge is from the guidelines or the standard of the infrastructure. Uh, this sort of information is like the knowledge that's stored in the brain of the experts or the workers. So uh, that makes it difficult for the common technology such as ChatGPT or the large language model to understand the semantic meaning of this kind of, from this kind of documents because they don't have the uh, domain specific background knowledge. For example, uh, this sort of professional noun, the uh, ChatGPT might store this uh, only one uh, professional noun or maybe it's uh, some separate words, but the expert with the profession uh, with the domain knowledge can understand that uh, the blue blue letters like the ball template is a specific uh, part of the steel box reader. Yeah, that's that's the ability that the common technology doesn't have. So the problem I'm trying to solve is uh, try to develop a technology that can automatically construct the domain knowledge graph. And uh, in the process of constructing a knowledge graph, the most important section is the information extraction. Uh, I want to uh, extract the entities and the relations from the domain text sentences. And that are the node and the age of the knowledge graph. And once this kind of information is extracted, the more knowledge graph are merged together and then we can complete the building of a big knowledge graph. So people uh, focus on developing different sort of methods of the information extraction. Uh, for example, uh, these are the three main types of the information extraction methodologies. Uh, among them, the predefined rule-based method has a very high performance, uh, but uh, this kind of method is semi-automatic uh, because it's relied on the ontology and rules that are designed by human. So it's a lot. Of, it's a 
kind of time-consuming and uh, the authority in one domain cannot put into another domain. Another two type of method are the machine learning based method and the natural language processing based method. Uh, for the machine learning based method, this kind of method like uh, capture the world level features so it cannot uh, Pass, cannot understand the logics among the words, uh, the logics of the sentence. So you can only deal with some simple information extraction tasks. And for the natural language processing based method, uh, this sort of method has the ability to understand the complex logics of the sentence, uh, but its accuracy is not high enough. So we could, so we could say that uh, the machine learning based method and the natural language processing based method these two kind of methods are complementary to each other, and the com combination of the multiple technologies can improve the information extraction performance. So, just in short, what I'm doing is to integrate different kinds of technology into the information info into the information extraction, so that to improve the construction performance of the domain knowledge graph. And the technologies I'm going to use. Uh, are these three main technologies. The first one is the large language model uh, because uh, the large language model are pre trained uh, before and it contains a rich word representations. And uh, through the process of fine tuning, fine tuning uh, the common knowledge and uh, common language, language model can be adapted to the specific tasks. The second type of uh, technology is uh, natural language processing uh, because this kind of technology can capture the sentence structure features. Let me take an example here. For example, this sentence, uh, we can allocate different type of labels uh, of the professional nouns of the sentence. Uh, for example, seven here means the location number uh, and the two here means the disease quantity. So uh, uh, this sort of structure feature, the pattern of the sentence uh, mean is an important uh, important uh, structure feature and that can help the extraction of information. And the third technology is a deep learning method. Uh, deep learning we all know that it takes use of the neural network to extract the complex feature. So just in short, uh, the large language model here is to extract the word level feature and the natural language processing technology to extract the sentence level feature. And we combine these two type of features that are in different uh, granularity and take use of the deep learning method to uh, process the integrated feature. Uh, so here is an example of how we combine the different technologies into the information instruction. Uh, in the first step, we input the sentences from the specifications into the network. And what I'm going to do is to extract the different type of features, including the word level feature and the sentence level feature. And we combine different features uh, and input that into the neural network. And as for how to uh, extract the word level feature, uh, I take use of the I take use of the large language model to do that. And the, the language model I choose is the BERT model, uh, which is very popular and uh, which is outstanding and uh, set many benchmark marks in the uh, NLP different kind of NLP tasks. So it can be viewed as a like standard in, in, this, in this field. And uh, for the sentence structure uh, feature, I take use of dependency type parsing. Uh, then what, what does this dependency here mean? Uh, here is a small example. For, for example, uh, in different sentences, uh, the word in the sentences, they have the dependency of uh, relations with other words in the sentence. Uh, for example, here, the city and the also, the city is a noun motif modifier of the of the word also so it's like the each word in the sentence has the dependency relations with others so that's uh so so so, so that's the 
uh, structure feature of the sentence. And uh, once the features of the different granularity are integrated together, uh, we input that into the neural network. The network we choose here is a high XPM. Uh, this sort of uh, network structure has two layers of LSTM uh, network. Uh, the first layer pass the sentence from the start to the end, and the second layer pass the sentence from the end to the start, so that it can improve its ability handling the long-term dependencies of the sequences. And then uh, I take use of the condition random field to improve the prediction performance. And once the, we got the extraction result, uh, the different tokens of the sentence are uh, located uh, the different labels. And we can see that we have the uh, subject here, the relations of that, so that we can build a knowledge graph. And here is a, a small study case uh, in the tunnel field. Uh, I take use of the standard in the New South Wales state tunnels. And uh, because tunnel is a complex infrastructure, it contains different type of components within that, including the structural uh, elements or the mecha mechanical elements. And uh, uh, the, the quantity of different type of elements is very small. And uh, the data set is imbalanced. But uh, thanks to the uh, existing of the large language model, the few short learning ability of our work uh, is, is, uh, is better, and it can deal with this sort of situation. And here is a basic, uh, basic result, a simple large graph that uh, takes use of the previous framework. But the accuracy is not good enough, and in the future, I will explore some of the more, uh, more advanced technologies, such as the fine tuning that transfer the common language model into the task specific. Uh, uh, field, or maybe try to take you some of other technologies to deal with the sample imbalance problem. Yeah, or in that field. So that's my presentation today. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice presentation. Actually, now you are processing only the documents with regulations and specifications, don't need the standard, right? Yeah. You haven't come to the point where you start processing some kind of measurement data. Mm. Point clouds or... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, observations. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, as I said in the presentation, the data in the G2 twin can be divided into two types. The first one is the regular data, the factual data that are sampled from the a uh, real scenario, including the point cloud you said, or maybe uh, from the uh, from the many pictures, pictures of the cracks. Yeah. And uh, what what I'm presenting today is the part of the regular data. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will explore the, the 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 domain of the factual data in in the maybe next one year. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So if we think about the factual data, then ideally you can actually relate that to the uh, the regular data. And I think that's kind of where I was coming from with the building blocks is that if you can actually create you know, individual small pieces of your domain in a reusable way in your regular data, then you can start building your systems that generate that factual data, the reference side, and you can automate a lot of that. At the moment, it's act that bit is actually really, really hard because of the lack of coordinate coherence in the regular data out there. Um, uh, it's not very machine readable, and therefore, yeah, there's, there's a huge amount of effort trying to understand what your practical data is, uh, if you're assimilating it in knowledge frames. So, yes, yeah, so maybe that's an area where um, we can think, uh, yeah. potentially, there's a the relationship yeah. between yeah, the model of your regular yeah. and your model of yeah. your practical data. Yeah. On, on top of that, I think there is there's already data models for the construction infrastructure space that you're now relying, I think, only on the documents and uh, existing, I guess, regulatory 
requirements. But then there are also special data models for the infrastructures and buildings. Perhaps you can add another layer to improve that 69%, 60% uh, return that you had. Uh, that. Because that is all, that's also the more formalized language uh, structure that can help potentially, perhaps. Yeah, you mean uh, like BIM model? Yeah, BIM, yeah. BIM IFD, yeah. etc. Yeah, we are discussing mostly about point clouds because all kind of BIM somehow have to be maintained during the construction process to yes. become BIM as view. And I think we have a presentation about it. Do we have a scan? Yeah, yeah, it can. Yeah. Yeah, so this information um, actually probably didn't become very clear, but you are working on maintenance of yeah. the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So trying yeah. to detect yeah. all kind of. But even you know, which, be, be, uh, what's, what's the factual and, and regular data? So I'm not talking about factual data, I'm talking about the regular data. Still, at that level, yeah. there is formalization that's been done. It may not be as um flexible as what you are doing but there is already some some relation between the objects and the, and the construction infrastructure that can be used perhaps in the context of your your research I, i'll send you a link of an example the building blocks wrapping one of the smart cities which they publish a whole bunch of data models but the point of the challenge is there's many domains publish competing lists of these yes and that's probably where the ai will actually help us try to work out <laughs> what those levels of overlap are and how to map those together. Mm. Okay, so let's now quickly jump to the third presentation, which is. You are also logged in? Okay, okay. 